Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we're finishing up our exploration into the new Core i7-10750H by taking a look at how it fares for gaming. We comprehensively covered productivity performance in our previous video and found that in general the 10750H was only marginally faster than Intel's previous generation Core i7-9750H. With both options on the market right now, depending on whether you go current gen or last gen, it doesn't make much sense to spend any extra cash on the new 10th Gen 6 core part because, well, it isn't offering a substantial upgrade. But what about for gaming? Well, on face value, you'd probably look at those results and think there is nothing to be gained while gaming either. Well, Intel disagrees because in their announcement presentation detailing processors like the Core i7-10750H, they emphasize the importance of high frequencies for gaming. And of course, the latest 10th gen parts are advertised with higher clocks, at least 5.0 GHz for the Core i7 and Core i9 range. So Intel are attempting to position these CPUs as better for gaming due to their higher frequency. Intel then spent some time comparing these new CPUs to three-year-old systems using processors like the Core i7-7700HQ, showing upwards of 30% performance improvements. But as we pointed out at the time, these two systems have drastically different GPUs. The three-year-old machine is paired with NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1070, while the new 10750H system gets the RTX 2070 Super. Based on our testing with Max-Q models, the laptop RTX 2070 Super is about 30% faster than the GTX 1070, which would account for the majority of this performance gain. There was no mention in this presentation of how the Core i7-10750H or any other 10th gen parts compared to their direct predecessors in the 9th generation. So today we're going to be putting that missing piece of the puzzle back into place and showing you the actual gaming performance that Intel didn't want to detail at launch. Now to be fair to Intel, they do have a point with their comparison. You don't just upgrade individual components when you buy a new laptop. Typically you get a whole new platform that includes a refreshed CPU, new GPU, better display, better components, and so on. So if you did buy a GTX 1070 system back in 2017, it's likely you would see around a 30% improvement to performance buying something in that same price class today. Sure, that performance gain is mostly on the GPU side, but I guess these days Intel will take whatever win they can get. But personally, I'm not as interested in the performance gain that you'll get from upgrading. Of course you'll get something faster if you are upgrading from a three-year-old system. I mean, that's exactly what you should expect. What I'm more interested in is what system you should be upgrading to. Is that a brand new 10th gen laptop? Or is it an older 9th gen machine that, as is the case with most upgrade cycles, comes down in price when the new systems are released. If we're not actually getting more performance with new laptops, those last gen systems might be much better value. This release cycle has been muddied by Nvidia changing a bunch of stuff with their GPU lineup for 2020 systems. And I don't mean the launch of new super GPUs, but instead the slight specification changes for existing parts, namely the RTX 2060 and RTX 2070, which are remaining in the market. Today's comparison between the Core i7-9750H and Core i7-10750H features laptops that both have an RTX 2060 inside, but the actual specs we are getting are different. I've talked in the past about how you can get laptops with the same NVIDIA GPU that perform differently due to the power limit. One might be 80 watts and the other 90 watts, for example. But this goes beyond that because both laptops have the same 80 watt power limit for the RTX 2060. However, the new model for 2020 features just 11 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory compared to the 2019 system that used 14 gigabits per second memory. Here is GPU-Z showing the new 2020 variant of the RTX 2060 in my MSI GS66. And here is what is supposed to be the exact same GPU in a 2019 laptop from Acer. Notice how the CUDA core count and clock speeds are the same, except the 2020 version has just a 1375 MHz memory clock, aka 11 gigabits per second. Memory bandwidth is reduced as a result down from 336 gigabytes per second to 264. The only name change I can see here is the move from a device ID of 10DE1F11 to 10DE1F15, suggesting this is a new revision of this part. And indeed, other 2020 laptops using the RTX 2060, such as the Ryzen-based ASUS Tough Gaming, are also using this new 1F15 model, in this case 90 watts instead of 80 watts. 
The TMU count is also being reported as different with this new GPU at 160 instead of 120 like old models. While I have asked Nvidia for clarification here, I believe this is an error as I'm, I'm not really sure how they'd increase the TMU count without also increasing those accessible CUDA cores. Anyway, enough on the specifications, let's briefly talk about the test conditions. As with all our laptop coverage, it is a challenge to achieve apples to apples comparisons, but the standard stuff applies here. We've tested all laptops with default settings and you can see the power limits for each component in our charts. We've also ensured each system included in our charts is running dual channel memory and has adequate cooling to remove a few potential bottlenecks. You can see the full list of laptops that we've tested in the description below. The main star of today's video is the new MSI GS66 Stealth, which is the laptop we've used to test the Core i7, 10750H and RTX 2060. It also has 16GB of DDR4 memory and a 1080p 240Hz display. Like I've mentioned, every time I test out MSI Stealth series, the design and portability of this laptop is awesome, and with a few price adjustments on the Nvidia side, it isn't outrageously expensive in this configuration either, at around $1600. US so, yeah, let's get into some testing now. We'll start with one of the newer games now test suite and one that is fully GPU limited, Control. Comparing both CPU configurations with the RTX 2060, we're seeing no performance difference. 1% lows are slightly lower with the new 10750H, but not by enough to exceed the margin of error really. So basically we are getting the same experience with the newer laptop generation despite its RTX 2060 featuring lower memory clocks. Another more modern title is Red Dead Redemption 2. While we aren't seeing an improvement to average performance with the upgrade to the Core i7-10750H, we do get around 7% better 1% low performance. 99% of the time we saw at least 37 FPS with our 10th gen configuration, which is that small bit smoother than the 35 FPS we saw with the 9750H. And you can quite clearly see Intel's 9th gen quad core struggling in this title with a stuttery experience. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is on occasion CPU limited with modern laptop hardware at 1080p. However, the performance difference between the 10750H and 9750H is negligible, and ultimately you'll get the same frame rate whether you opt for a current or last gen system with the same GPU. Metro Exodus is another mostly GPU limited title at 1080p with an RTX 2060, and it's here we don't see any noticeable performance difference between the two 6 core CPU options. As we're mostly GPU bound, you'll get far more out of a GPU upgrade than a CPU upgrade, although here there wasn't much to be gained opting for an RTX 2060 over a GTX 1660 Ti. Resident Evil 2 using balance settings is one title that can benefit from improved CPU performance on occasion with this mid-tier GPU. While the 10750H was faster, we are looking at a 2% margin on average over the 9750H, which is basically in the margin of error. Going from 125 to 127 FPS isn't going to change your experience drastically. We've looked at five games so far that don't show much of a performance gain, so how about Shadow of the Tomb Raider? This is an interesting case for these systems. The Core i7-10750H laptop I tested was actually 5% slower when looking at average frame rates, but 4% faster when looking at 1% lows. It appears as though the lower memory bandwidth of the 2020 variant of the RTX 2060 is limiting average performance somewhat, while the new CPU does improve smoothness in the more CPU demanding sections of the game. And this is a title that hits both components hard, so the results are particularly interesting. Hitman 2 is another very CPU demanding title. Unlike with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there is a negligible performance difference between the 9th and 10th gen processors. With multiple cores getting hit hard in this title, it's not possible for Intel's Skylake architecture to provide anything extra when constrained to 45 watts. Battlefield 5 is a title where clearly Intel's 9th generation quad core is not a great option for playing at 1080p with ultra settings, given its lower 1% low performance than other configurations in this chart. When comparing 6-core CPUs though, we see equivalent average frame rates and a small 3% gain to 1% lows. The game is slightly smoother and more consistent with 10th gen, but not by much. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is much the same, average performance is roughly identical between each system, however the 10750H does increase 1% lows by 4%. Nothing earth shattering and these gains to 1% lows are in line with many of the productivity results we saw. The 10750H does clock slightly higher than the 9750H in our test systems, but we're still getting basically the same performance. We'll finish off with some more CPU demanding titles from a few years back. 
One of those is Prey, which hits the CPU hard on modern laptops, with faster CPUs delivering much better 1% low figures. The 10750H delivers 7% higher 1% lows in this title compared to the 9750H, which is a decent gain, and that's in line with what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. This leads to a marginally smoother game. In Watch Dogs 2, we see one of the rare strong victories for the 10750H in terms of average frame rates, pulling nearly 5% ahead of the 9750H. Again, we're not talking earth-shattering or game-changing margins here, but a small gain is a small gain, which is more than we can say about most of the titles we've looked at. And finally, let's take a look at Grand Theft Auto V. Here we actually see slightly slower performance on average with the Core i7-10750H system. Pretty hard to say exactly why, especially as the margins are so tight. Could be down to the lower GDDR6 memory bandwidth for the RTX 2060, but yeah, there's a few variables at play here. Overall, I was able to test 18 games in the very limited time I had with the MSI GS66. I would have loved to test more for this comparison, but 18 was the magic number this time around. Looking at average frame rate performance, there really isn't that much of a difference between the RTX 2060 from 2019 paired with the Core i7-9750H compared to the RTX 2060 from 2020 with the Core i7-10750H. Despite a reduction to memory bandwidth, this revised GPU for 2020 isn't impacted in any significant way and happily goes about providing roughly the same performance on average with Intel's new 10th gen CPU. In terms of 1% low performance, the Core i7-10750H system is slightly faster on average. The biggest wins here were in titles like Prey, Dirt 4, and Red Dead Redemption 2, where the 10th gen CPU was able to provide up to 8% better performance. But in many cases, the difference was negligible, leading to just a 2% performance gain here across our 18 game average, with a few rare performance regressions. For a lot of people watching this video, seeing these sorts of 0 to 5% performance margins isn't very exciting. It's almost like we're comparing two identical hardware configurations. That's how narrow the margin was for average frame rates in particular. But to me, I still find this sort of testing interesting because we've just learned how Intel's new CPU generation fares for gaming. At this point, you can clearly see why Intel chose not to compare 10th gen CPUs to 9th gen CPUs in their marketing materials. It's because we simply aren't getting a significant gain to performance upgrading from a Core i7-9750H to a Core i7-10750H. In the absolute best cases, we saw an 8% improvement to 1% lows, but more often the improvement was 2% or less. This is very similar to the margins we saw for productivity performance comparing these two CPUs. Now with the small changes to NVIDIA's RTX 2060 GPU for 2020 as well, namely the reduced memory speed, it's hard to do a definitive apples to apples comparison with 10th and 9th gen parts with the same GPU. But the reality is this, whether you are buying a Core i7-9750H system with an RTX 2060, or a Core i7-10750H system with a new RTX 2060, you'll be getting roughly the same experience in games. This leads me to a pretty basic conclusion on what system you should buy. Whatever of the two options is cheaper. If you see a 9750H system with an RTX 2060 for less money than a newer 10750H configuration, don't feel like you're missing out on performance because you aren't. It's quite common for last gen systems to get a discount around the launch of a new generation, so this could be a great time to cash in. Without any tangible performance improvements, there's no incentive to spend more on that new 10th gen 6 core CPU for gaming or productivity really, as performance is very similar there as well. There are a few important notes to make here though. While Intel hasn't shifted the price to performance needle on the CPU side, Nvidia has dropped pricing for their GPUs to fit in new SKUs at the top end. This means RTX 2060 laptops are now available at what used to be GTX 1660 Ti prices, and RTX 2070 laptops sit where the RTX 2060 used to sit. Older 9th gen systems will have to drop in price a fair bit to match this new generation. I do expect that to happen eventually, but right now there are plenty of cases where 10th gen options are actually much better value. The MSI GS Stealth I tested in this video, for example, used to be priced at US dollars for a 9750H and RTX 2060, and as of publishing this video, it still is priced at that. Now you can get the 10750H and RTX 2060 for just $1,600 in the GS66. That makes the newer model a really good buy in terms of value. Sure, Intel hasn't improved CPU performance, but at least Nvidia was able to rescue this generation with a shakeup to GPU pricing.
It's also important to remember that we tested with the same power limits for the hardware in our main comparison. Any changes to power targets, for example, getting a laptop that can run the 10750H at 60 watts or the RTX 2060 up to its new maximum limit of 115 watts, will change the performance equation. These figures aren't often advertised, so yeah, have fun researching everything to find which system is the best. And finally, at least for these mid-tier and entry-level systems, it is worth remembering about Ryzen models. While the GS66 is a decent value buy at $1600 compared to its predecessor, there is some good competition on the AMD side, often with cheaper prices, probably due to AMD being more competitive with pricing for Ryzen 4000. The MSI GS66 is 10% more expensive than the ASUS Zephyrus G14 with the RTX 2060 Max-Q and Ryzen 9 4900HS but it's only 5% faster in games on average, while the ASUS model is much faster for productivity apps. At the high end, it's a non-contest really, as it's all Intel, but with the RTX 2060 and below, it is worth exploring every available option to you right now, as there's a lot of competition in the mobile space. And yeah, that's it for this testing of the Core i7-10750H. Can't imagine we'll do too much more on this, given that we've just done two videos where we haven't really seen much of a performance improvement, but hopefully you have all the information now that you need about buying 10th gen laptops with this very popular six core CPU. If you're interested in more of our laptop testing, there are loads of different CPUs that we're still expecting to get in for testing soon, including the Ryzen 5 4600H, new Ryzen U series stuff. I think we've got two SKUs coming for that, and hopefully a few more Intel options as well, like the Core i5s and even the Core i9, uh, if we can get that in so subscribe for all of that also a big thanks to all our patreon members who support us directly it goes a long way to helping us buy some of the laptops that we need for this sort of testing you can get access to our discord chat monthly live streams all that sort of thing links are in the description below and i'll catch you in the next one